Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? will say I was surprised. I spoke to a number of CEOs who I would say walked into the meeting being Trump supporter-ish or thinking that they might be leaning that direction, who said that he was remarkably meandering, uh, could not keep a straight thought, was all over the map, and that they, which may be not surprising, but was interesting to me because these were people who I think might have been actually predisposed to him and actually walked out of the room less predisposed really? to him, actually predisposed to thinking this is not necessarily, as one person said, this may not be any different or better than a, a, a Biden thought if you're thinking I that think way. Only hey, everybody, it's Jeff. <laughs> Friday, today's Friday. And uh, the weather here in Maine is like, uh, it doesn't understand or doesn't know whether or not to be a thunderstorm or not. We get a little bit of rain, then the sun comes out, then it darkens, looks like thunder, but then it's a little bit of rain, then the sun comes out. <laughs> very, very weird weather, weather patterns here uh, in Maine uh, uh, for today, for, for Friday. So, I, I, you know, like I said, how, who the hell can figure out the weather in this state anyway? I mean, even before global warming was a thing, there was main weather, <laughs> which was equally chaotic. <laughs> you can't plan anything in this state because you can't plan on the weather being cooperative. You know, uh, the only place you can expect the weather to be cooperative is in the fucking desert somewhere in the world because you know what one it's going to be the same every fucking day, right? <laughs> um, but not here, not in Maine. We are. I mean, they talk about England. Uh, when they call this area New England, they mean it because it really is uh, a mirror of England here. So, um, yeah, Trump had a, a meeting here with a bunch of CEOs in Washington, D.C. Um, and everybody expected that, you know, I mean, because obviously these people that were meeting with him are donors, front frontline donors uh, for Trump's campaign. But uh, I think a lot of them were kind of shocked at uh, Trump's, you know, mental status during this thing, uh, during the meeting and stuff like that. And there's a story here written about this and um, at uh, CNBC, uh, written by Christina Wilkie, entitled CEOs at Trump meeting ex-president uh, meandering and doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> um, former President Trump failed to impress everyone in a room full of top CEOs Thursday at the Business Roundtable's quarterly meeting, multiple attendees told CNBC. Quote, Trump doesn't know what he's talking about, unquote, said one CEO who was in the room, according to a person who heard the executive speaking. The CEO also said, Trump did not explain how he planned to accomplish any of his policy proposals, that person said. Um, hold on a second here. Uh, huddled with at least 80 CEOs uh, in Washington with a clear pitch. If he is elected president again in November, the CEOs are going to see tax cuts and curtailment of business regulations, according to people... Uh, who attended the meeting, 
CNBC spoke with people who attended the business roundtables quarterly meeting and others familiar with what took place uh, there, all of whom were granted anonymity in order to speak freely about a private gathering. Trump said that if he is returned to the White House, he will cut taxes, including income taxes, and bring back the same economic policies he enacted during his first term, according to people who were in the meeting. Quote, we're going to give you more of the same for the next four years, unquote, a person who was in the room said, describing Trump's message for the company leaders. Trump said he wants to bring the federal corporate tax rate down from 21 to 20 percent if he were to become president, according to a person familiar with his remarks. Trump also mentioned to the CEOs a recent proposal he rolled out in Nevada to eliminate taxes on worker tips said people who were in the room. Trump then told the CEOs a story about how excited tipped workers were about his proposal, prompting laughter from the corporate leaders, according to multiple people. Trump spoke for about an hour at the meetings, said people in attendance. Uh, the audience included J.P. Morgan Chase, CEO, uh, Jamie uh, Dimon, Citigroup CEO, Jane uh, Frazier and Bank of America CEO Brian Monahan, according to spokespeople from their companies. Apple CEO Tim Cook was there, said two people who were in the room. A spokesperson for Cook declined to comment on whether he attended the meeting. President Joe Biden's chief of staff, Jeff Z uh, Zintz, Zients, whatever, uh, addressed the group earlier in the day, one attendee said. Representatives for the Trump campaign and the business roundtable did not respond to requests for comment before publication. For Trump and the CEOs who attended the meeting represented an effort to mend relations after some have distanced themselves from the former president. In 2017, the Trump administration's major business adversary groups were disbanded after members began resigning in response to Trump's attempt to equate both sides of the Charlottesville, Virginia protests, one side of which featured uh, white nationalists. During the riot on January 6th on Capitol Hill, executives, including members of the Business Roundtable, called on Trump to stop the violence. In the meeting Thursday, Trump also took a big dig at Biden. Quote, we need a president who is at the top of his game, and let's face it, this president is not at the top of his game, unquote, Trump said, according to a person who was in the room. Trump told a meeting full of House Republicans earlier in the day about the idea of imposing an, quote, all-tariff policy, unquote that, unquote, that he said would enable the U.S. to get rid of income tax, according to attendees who were granted anonymity to speak about private meeting. The same CEOs who were struck by Trump's lack of focus, quote, walked into the meeting being Trump uh, supporter-ish or, <laughs> or thinking that they might be leaning that direction, unquote, Sorkin reported. Uh, quote, these were people who I think might have been actually predisposed to Trump, but actually walked out of the room less predisposed, unquote, to him, said uh, Sorkin. Quote, uh, President Trump was warmly received by everyone in the room and was commended for his policy proposals on deregulation and tax cuts, unquote, said Stephen Cheung communications director for the Trump presidential campaign. Trump's energy in the meeting was also noticeably subdued, according to two people who were in the room. At no time during his remarks was there any noticeable applause for Trump, uh, two attendees told CNBC. This was in contrast to Trump's meeting earlier in the day with House Republicans on Capitol Hill. Attendees at that meeting told CNBC that the former president was animated and engaged and that Trump received several rounds of applause in separate meetings Thursday with both House and Senate Republicans. Cheung said uh, there was applause for Trump during the Q&A section of the meeting, quote, where participants commented, uh, participants commended President Trump for his deregulatory and tax cut agenda, unquote. Trump's low-key energy at the business roundtable event could have been deliberate, one attendee told CNBC. Trump had wanted the CEO meeting to be, quote, more like a business meeting than a speech, unquote, the person said. Quote, at one point he discussed his plan to bring the corporate tax rate down from 
21 to 20 percent and was asked about why he had chosen 20 percent Sorkin said Friday on NB MSNBC's Morning Joe unquote and he said uh, well it's a round number unquote quote that's uh, unto itself had a number of CEOs shaking their heads unquote Sorkin re re reported in 2023 corporate income taxes contributed approximately 420 billion dollars to federal revenues according to the Congressional Budget Office Wall Street has bristled over the past three years under President Biden's aggressive antitrust enforcement, pharmaceutical price caps, and progressive tax policy. So it wasn't uh, wasn't a home run, I guess you can say. Overall, a lot of people walked out of there, and you know, kind of. They went in there kind of wondering if they should support them, and they left still wondering whether they should support them. So that's not really a good sign. And this is from people who have brains, okay? Now, the people who don't have brains and listen to Trump talk, they're like this all the time. Everything, everything is great. But when people go in there, smart people go in there, and they listen to this man talk, they're like, you know, Jesus Christ. You know, I, I thought I could make, make up my mind about this guy, and I still can't. You know, this is what they're. This is basically what they're saying under their breath. I mean, they cannot, they cannot make a choice. They can't make a decision whether they should support this guy or not. And these are his frontline donors. And if he can't secure them, you know, then you know the narrative that's being played out here by the Trump campaign is going to change. I think, anyway, in order to get that money going their way um, and certainly Trump is is known for telling a lie then reversing himself and then re, re reversing himself over and over to fit whatever narrative he thinks is going to gain him those votes and stuff like that so in other words he'll just say whatever he's got to say he'll do whatever he's got to do but he's got to get into that White House one way or the other what he promises people it's a grain of salt tell you what a grain of salt you don't he doesn't he doesn't know what he's going to be able to do when he gets in there. People have plans, the, the Project 2025. People have plans on what he should do when he gets in there. Ultimately, uh, it's not really going to be up to Trump whether he's going to be able to follow through with his promises or not. It's going to be those people that he brings in with him uh, into the White House. Uh, because as we all know, Trump m mentally is not... It, it's not holding together okay we, we can see that it's pretty obvious now uh, he just he wanders around you know uh, when he's at events and stuff like that people wonder where's he going and he doesn't you know and he uh, uh, you know he slurs his speech and when he talks it's always the same kind of bullshit jargon that he brings up in every fucking rally um, and people think that he just he, he cannot focus you know he tells stories about a snake, and then he talks about a goddamn, uh, uh, you know, person that he knew, and and uh, then he, he screams at the teleprompter, and then he uh, he badgers somebody off the stage or something. You know, I mean, he, he does this act like it's sort of like a like a traveling circus act that he does at every rally. Okay, and it might be entertaining to the low educated people out there. But it doesn't work with the uh, educated people who really want to know what he's got for a plan because, hey, they got money on the line here, you know. With them, you know, it's about the money. And if they can't get a straight answer out of this guy as to what his plans are so they can evaluate whether or not he's a viable choice for president, you know, they're just going to, you know, close up their checkbooks and just walk away, you know. Um, and at the end of the day, I think, regardless of how the average citizen thinks of this guy, at the end of the day, I think, as it always is, big money is going to be the deciding factor here uh, on, you know, who becomes president uh, in November, okay? It always is. Unfortunately, we can't get the money out of politics, okay? Um, everybody wants it the way it is, and because of because the system is awash with cash, uh, 
you're, you know, it's like trying to build a wall to hold back a fucking ocean. I mean, it's just not going to hold, <laughs> okay? Uh, the money is there, and it's going to stay there. Uh, once, you know, it's one of those things that's happened in our government that we wish we could undo because we see the end result of what happens when you got big money flowing into the pockets of the politicians. Okay, these people throw away their ethics and, and, uh, uh, and their principles depending on who the hell is paying them, you know. Uh, and this goes even people, for people who are not politicians, but uh, basically play the political game from afar, okay. You can get them to say and do whatever the hell you want. Uh, want them to say and do and uh, unfortunately everybody's got a price you know everybody's got a price I can't say that uh, with any degree of certainty that anybody that somebody out there would not have a price okay I just I would say that everybody does at some point and they will find that price they will find that price no matter what it is if you're important enough for them to get something out of you that helps them they will pay you whatever the fuck it is you want for money and you know that right there is what's stabbing this country's heart is money uh, it was said for a long time you know uh, that the United States is greed is what's gonna do them in and really it is what's gonna do us in it's not really gonna be uh, politics that's that's a side effect of money in our system but the the uh, corruption the greed for that goddamn money that's infected our economic system that's affecting our political system that's what's going to bring the country down in the end of the day is the is the the lust for fucking money okay and like i said that's like how high is up because there's no limit to how much money people will want ask the richest man in the world whether he thinks that uh, he's rich enough and he's he's not going to agree he's going to say no i need more money there's never an end it's like an alcoholic. There's never enough fucking beer to satiate that desire for alcohol. It's never enough until they die from it. You know, it's it's to a fault. Same thing with the greedy. Okay, the only thing that'll bring down the greedy is their greed. At the end of the day, it's going to be their greed. It's Trump. You know, Trump is that. His greed is, has caused him a lot of fucking trouble, legal trouble, you know. And, uh, you know, that's a good example right there of what I'm talking about, about greed. And so when you look at greed on a national scale and, the, and our system and our country's flag being buried under dollar bills, okay, essentially, then you know what's going to happen, okay? That dog's not going to hunt forever. I mean, it's just, it's at some point it's going to stop and that, that's where we're headed. And it's the greed that'll destroy America at the end of the day. Uh, not really uh, politicians because if politicians uh, had any principles they wouldn't accept the money you wouldn't be able to pay them off right so hey you know so that tells you that we got too many people who have a price tag and they get like for sale and an amount under what they uh, what their sale price is and that's why they're there in Washington is to walk around and hope that somebody will run up to them and say I will cut you a check for a yep 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 and you say this on MSNBC or Fox News tonight and they will say thank you that's what they do they take the money and they go with it you know that's why they're there I mean hell what who the hell wants to be a politician and get paid in peanuts you know, nobody wants that. Everybody that becomes a lawyer or a politician or something, they're in it for the fucking money. Pure and simple. Because they know that's where it's at. You know, same thing, you know, with the, the medical field. I mean, a lot of these people, probably not as many today, but as there used to be a time when people would rush to be, become doctors and nurses and stuff like that. There was money in that. Until they found out you got to work for it, you know. And, and now, all of a sudden, now it's not such a big thing to go into. No, it's it's... Let's be a stockbroker. Let's go to work for Wall Street. Let's go into politics. Let's go into where the money is flowing at the root. You know, that's what they want now. That's what everybody wants. And that's a sign of greed snowballing into a big thing that's just going to bury this country at the end of its life. Okay? Uh, that's what will kill uh, our democracy. Capitalism. That will kill it. 
un unregulated, uncontrolled capitalism. Uh, that's what will destroy the country. And by God, we're going to have a lot of evidence to show that in years to come when, when our country does fall. And people will ask, uh, if, such, if America was such a great place, what happened to it? Then you're going to say, sit down, my friend, because I got a big story to tell you about that. You know, and, uh, you know, if people don't learn uh, about this this period in American history, the, the 20th century, uh, and the, the greed that grew out of it, and how it brought down a country, uh, I mean, it's biblical in proportions, okay? I mean, we talk about Rome, ancient Rome, okay, and the empire and how it fell. Uh, they'll be talking about the United States sometime in the distant future and how great it was for a time until corruption money greed all that stuff plate got into involved with it and brought it down you know uh, and you know I can't it would be sad because you know you know our country's young <laughs> you know and to have it come to its end so soon uh, would be a, it would be a terrible thing you know it's like we never really gave democracy an honest chance because the minute we started it, there were already people trying to rip it apart from the very start. It's like, you know, nobody could agree that democracy would work. They just wanted to see if they could get rid of it and replace it with something else, something that uh, they just, uh, uh, they couldn't, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it seems really ridiculous. They hated England so much to come over here, they wanted to recreate England. Really, you know, how does that work? All right, let's go to a commercial break. We'll be right back. This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. And I don't believe in teleprompters, although it's very easy. Oh. You should be, you know how easy that would be? Instead of this, I'm working my ass off, okay? In fact, if I would have known teleprompters, I would have used them. I've started to use them a little bit. They're not bad. You never get yourself in trouble when you use a teleprompter. So the teleprompter's a bummer. It doesn't work. Get, hey, get this thing out of here, will you? From Cornwallis of Yorktown. Our army manned the air. It ran the ramparts. It took over the airports. It did everything it had to do. The teleprompter went out. So I had... Yeah, the teleprompter went out. It kept going on. And then at the end, it just went out. It went kaput. In the history of the world. in decline.
What are Republicans like Rick Scott, J.D. Vance, and Mike Johnson doing in a New York City courtroom? Wasting time, wasting taxpayer money. Just the unbelievable, just complete waste. Are they in Washington, D.C., working to make the economy stronger or America safer or your life better? No, no, no. No. They talk about inflation and gas prices, but they're too busy cheerleading their leader to do anything about it. Everybody loves me. They should be in Washington, making the tough votes to strengthen the border. This makes zero sense. Instead, they're kissing Trump's ring in Manhattan. It was not a good look for Congress. They're not loyal to you. They're loyal to him. It can only be my personality, that's all. It's why more Americans are asking than ever before. Is this what we're paying them for? Not in Washington doing their jobs. They're at the courthouse. The American people are over it. Terry Lake and Donald Trump, at first, they admitted they wanted a national abortion ban. I don't think abortion pills should be legal. There has to be some form of punishment. For the woman? Yeah, there has to be some form. Now, they're pretending they won't back the ban if they're elected. They're lying. This total ban on abortion is out of line with where the people of this state are. Did Arizona go too far? Yeah, they did, and that'll be straightened out. I agree with President Trump. This is such a personal and private issue. Two frauds, desperately, running from the truth and from their real position. She backed the ban, and he's still bragging about ending Roe. Look at I was able to terminate Roe v. Wade, and I'm proud to have done it. I was so honored to have done it. They'll ban all abortion, even to save a mother's life. They'll end IDF, and they'll ban birth control. Donald Trump and Carrie Lake, they're the same. They're dishonest, deceptive, and dangerous for every woman. Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Be a part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th, and St. John November 20th through the 26th. Welcome back, everybody. I uh, want to play play something here for you because this is going to go to what I'm going to be discussing here uh, in a minute here. So just <clears throat> just watch this here, okay? The Wall Street Journal has published a story. The Wall Street Journal is out with new reporting. Calling into question the mental fitness of President Joe Biden. Calling into question the mental fitness of President Biden. President Joe Biden's mental fitness being questioned once again. As national correspondent Matt Galka tells us, the issue could be an election decider. As national correspondent Matt Galka tells us, the issue could be an election decider. As national correspondent Matt Galka tells us, the issue could be an election decider. But... Could it be an election decider? No. Um, okay, so the, the, the press as a whole, all of a sudden now, is worried about President Biden's mental health. And 
could it be an uh, election decider? Uh, and the funny thing is, is that they all are saying this thing as if they're reading this from some kind of a, a mass uh, letter that was sent to all these news outlets, okay? I mean, talk about scripted. That was definitely scripted. Somebody out there wanted this to be out in the in the news, okay? And I have to say, local news stations, okay, not your national ones, but uh, the local stations predominantly are conservative leaning, okay? So it would be easy to get them all behind, you know, a talking point to throw out there in the in the in the public. So. Who benefits from this talking point that Trump, or Biden rather, uh, has, you know, does he have a problem mentally that he that should concern voters? Well, what about the other side of the coin? I mean, isn't criminality, you know, an election decider? I mean, if a person has been convicted of a crime, more, more than one crime actually, and is still under investigation for a multitude of other crimes, isn't that an election decider? You see what I'm saying? You know, we had Reagan, and with his dementia and all that that was at play, okay, nobody wanted him out of office. The Republicans wanted him to stay for the full, uh, full duration, okay? It didn't matter that he had Alzheimer's and he was falling apart year by year, okay? Now, all of a sudden, we're talking about Joe Biden, who at this point, is still more sound in mind than even Reagan was, okay? But we, there's much to, to wonder about Donald Trump, especially when if you've attended any of his rallies and you listen to this man, okay? He doesn't talk to people like he's a man running for a political office. He talks to them like he's just t uh, talking to people at a barbecue or something, and that the shit that he tells people could be or could not be true. I mean, we don't know. I mean, he comes up with the weirdest stories at these things, you know, and and if he ain't uh, talking about weird things, he's attacking people. And when he's not attacking people, okay, he's fighting with the teleprompter, <laughs> you know, or he or he's up there making a buffoon of himself, you know, screaming out his obscenities or shouting out comments, you know, ah, no, I flies around here, you know, I mean, he, he acts like a fool. And we're not supposed to wonder about his mental status? Come on. Obviously, obviously what's going on here is uh, the Trump campaign is, is paying these, these stations here uh, to do this story, uh, to see doubt in the voters' minds about uh, uh, President Biden okay that's all this is about and the thing of it is is you you know while they got you focused on Biden don't forget about Trump and don't forget about the severity of qualify uh, of the lack of qualifications he has to come back as president I mean he was already not fit to be president the first time around but he got in there anyway because the Democrats bungled their own election they, they snatched defeat out of the jaws of victory okay but now that we had four years of this madman and, and the years in, uh, since he wasn't president, listening to his rants and seeing the crimes that he actually committed being put in our face to see that, hey, this man was a criminal. Okay, definite, uh, you know, sign of a criminal family. He likes to label uh, Joe Biden as a uh, father of a criminal family. But Trump himself is definitely that. There's no question of it. You can dig and dig all you want into the Biden history. You're not going to find much crime there, if anything, okay? But with Trump, you don't have to dig that deep at all. It's all on a sleeve, for Christ's sake. All right? And still, still, you know, they, they want people to just focus on the negative things, you know, uh, or even the made-up negative things about Joe Biden. Forget all the stuff that Trump did that broke the law and got the country in danger and all this shit. Nobody cares, right? The right wing doesn't care. They don't want you to look at that, that the dumpster fire, okay? They don't want you to see that. They just want you to look at the fabricated lies that they're making up about Biden where there is no background or proof of anything to substantiate their claims, okay? There isn't. And how the voters think, well, you're not going to know until November. But if there's any sanity left in this country come November, 
okay, then people are not going to vote for Trump because he is a bad example of what it is to be an American. He really is. He's an embarrassment. He always has been, okay, and putting himself in the political arena has made him a bigger ass than he ever was before. Okay, he'd have been, he was better as being this infamous businessman uh, before he started this political thing here. Okay, but with him, his, his attention, his need for attention uh, wasn't enough that he was a businessman. He had to be something more. And that's the reason why he got into politics was because it, it gave him attention that he wanted. But unfortunately, his flaws came out during all that and he got attention that he didn't want but he still still rides it anyway because even negative attention is still attention and it keeps his name in the news so that's why he does it you know it keeps him in there and unfortunately too many people are reading into that and saying that he's a good person you know or that he's he's on our side because they keep following him and and uh, you know and of course Trump keeps saying I'm the victim I'm the victim they're always after me, me, and always trying to bring me down. And by bringing me down, they're going to bring you down. You know, uh, that's that's an old trope that mo a lot of leaders around the world, uh, most of them bad ones, had said to their uh, to their societies in order to gain power or to keep power. All right, uh, and it it works just as much here in America as it does in those other countries. And unfortunately, uh, the only reason why this continues is because the other side doesn't play hard enough to counter that, unfortunately. I think a lot of times Democrats can go on the offensive because they got so much on this fucking guy that they could literally... I mean, why is it they have a former Republican group that calls himself the Lincoln Project out there doing the fight for the Democrats that the Democrats themselves ought to be doing right now, okay? It's, it's really kind of embarrassing that former Republicans had to create this group to attack Trump and the MAGA movement uh, when they could have, you know, where the Democrats could have already had all that up and going. No, it took, it took a, the other side to bring that fight to them. I mean, they like to blame the Democrats for the Lincoln... No, Lincoln Project is Republicans, okay? That's what they, they're former Republicans, people who are embarrassed about Trump, who have come out and said that we're gonna, we're gonna fight this guy. He's not helping our party, he's destroying it. Okay, all the things that we stand for and everything like that, he's kicked that out or made that a mockery uh, under his, uh, you know, under his leadership for president, you know, for four years. But we can't have him back in there again because he'll do some damage to the country that's going to take generations to fix and we ain't going to wait that long so that's why they're doing this and the democrats sit there and, and say yeah okay go ahead and do that for us do that for you do that for you what's the matter you know you can't fight your damn battles you got to have somebody else do it for you that's pretty weak i gotta say it's pretty fucking weak Especially when you're on the right side of history all the time. You should be able to fight these battles and win. There shouldn't be any snatching defeat from the jaws of victory if you're on the right. Okay? If you're, if you're fucking correct in what you say and, and you're actually echoing the sentiments of the majority of the country. If you're on the side of the majority, you should win. You are expected to win. Okay? You're expected to fucking win. But, you know, you guys, you don't really play hard enough, okay? I'm sorry if you think, if you disagree with me, okay? But from my perspective, I don't see it, okay? You have this dwindling voice out there that's not being really heard because the right wing has dominated the airwaves for Christ Almighty, 25, 30 fucking years at least, okay? And you guys have been... A, really haven't been putting much effort into it. Now I know you're going to say, well, the money, the money's not there. Get the money. Republicans can find the money. So can you. You can get the fucking money. You just got to get boots on the fucking ground and get busy and do it. Okay? I'm sorry. But it, it's really frustrating at times when you see an idiot like Donald Trump and other morons like, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Bobo getting all this attention 
you know, all the time from the press. When are you guys going to come down on the fucking press? You know, and put your foot up their ass, basically, okay? This is supposed to be a free press in this country. There's supposed to be unbiased reporting of the news, and yet it's anything but now. You might as well take the press we got and fit it into Russia, because basically they're already set to do Russia's bidding. You know, whoever pays them the biggest money is who they're going to speak for. It's already compromised. We don't have a free press anymore. We don't have free to thought in the press anymore. They're all paid for by corporate entities. Okay, and you guys let that happen. You guys let that, you didn't fight the battle to stop that interference of money. You, another thing, money in politics. You should have been there harder than you were to stop that, but you failed on that again. Okay, it's a series of fucking failures, you know, and like I said, the, the, the bailout of the banks in 2007 and 8, again, failure, right there, failure. You let Bush get away with that. After you told him no, he went ahead and did it anyway, and you guys should have expected that, especially from the right wing. They are devious, little fox, that's what they are. They don't follow the rule of law for a damn thing. Democracy is just a hurdle they jump over every fucking day they get out of bed. And you people don't raise the hurdle higher. No, you just say, well, leave it the way it is. No, 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 you don't leave it the way it is. You fix it so the fuckers can't keep jumping over it. That's what you do. That's what you do. You put you put your foot down and you say no. You're not jumping this hurdle. You're gonna you're gonna jump. You're not gonna jump this. So you're gonna abide by it. You're gonna take the path that we set out here for you to do your thing. Okay. That wall is there for a reason. No. They can't have gotten as far and as powerful as they have without the other side just sitting back and letting things go. All right. It never would have happened, especially with the majority on their side. That never would have happened. But you see, there's, there's blame to go around here, isn't there, about the situation of our country. It isn't all just the maggots, okay? The Democrats, uh, a lot of them just were not, haven't been there, okay? They've watched this unfold, and uh, without much resistance from them, without, you know, much unity, from them, because I think that's one of the big problems with the Democrat Party. There's no unity there. You know, these people, look what happened here just recently with the fight going on over in uh, Israel, uh, you know, and, and Hamas and, and the Gaza Strip. Okay, the Democrats were falling apart. They're, they're, they were attacking each other over that. They weren't unified. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Whenever the, whenever, uh, the time is needed for a unified uh, party, the Democrats are like herding cats. You can't get them to come together on that. They just want to argue and debate. While the Republicans, you know, for better or for worse, to a fault even, they stay unified. Even if the person that they're following is a fucking liar and a crook and a cr uh, criminal and, you know, name it. It doesn't matter. They stay unified. Okay? Well, what we need is a little bit more unity in, in the Democrat Party. And if you don't like it, you could start your own party. We'll welcome other parties starting. We certainly could use more than just two or even just three. We could use a lot of parties in our political structure these days, I think, because I think a lot of people are just tired of the same old, same old uh, from the different groups. Uh, they'd like to have more choices. Okay, that would open the door to more honest people running for certain offices because if the money is so divided, okay, uh, to different people, then, you know, then these people will have to run on their own character, right? They'd have to talk about their accomplishments. They'd be forced to do that in order to get support, you know. But if everybody's unified under one or two parties, well, all the money's going to go to this side or go to this side. You see what I'm saying? So if you've got a lot of different parties, the money gets div divided out more, okay? And people will run on, on better uh, policies, better plans, okay, to make people think, well, we got choices here. We don't have to just pick A or B. We got C, D, E, F, you know, and all these others. Uh, so I'd, I'd like to see that. But, <laughs> you know, with... Uh, uh, with the press out there 
doing what they're doing, that's that's an embarrassment. And, and it's shameful, too, I think. It really is. Because I grew up, I was born in 71, okay, and I saw a good press in my lifetime. And then I saw that good press slowly fade into just generic shit, tabloid stuff, okay. Uh, and then when all the, the uh, people like Wallace and, you know, Cronkite and all them passed off into, and, you know, passed away, what was left was a generation of people who, who are journalists because they, quote, want to change the world. No, 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 no. That's not what the job of a journalist is. Your job as a journalist is to educate and to inform the public, to give people information so they can make logical choices. You're not to change the world, okay? Changing the world means you've got an agenda. It means you want people to hear a certain slant of facts and that's it. You want to change direction. No, you don't get that choice as a journalist. You have to be unbiased. You cannot take... It's like the Red Cross, for Christ's sake. Same fucking thing, okay? You're neutral. Matter of fact, when you become uh, what I think, you know, if you're a member of the press, you cannot claim a country as your home. I think you should give up certain rights. Uh, if you're an American and you're a journalist, you cannot be, uh, quote, an American citizen. You have to be neutral. You have to report. If this country does something fucked up, then you report that. If it does something good, then you report that. Okay, because that's what we depend on you for. We don't want your comments. We don't want your opinions. We just want your facts. That's all we want. Okay, there's too much of this goddamn op-ed on the air. Okay, if you want to read an op-ed, the newspaper, that's fine. But keep it off the fucking airwaves, okay? Keep it off the airwaves. Because, you know, people just cannot think for themselves. You've done it so much now, people don't know how to think. You know, they don't know what's good for them. Because you've been telling them what to think for all these years now. 30 years. Think about it. A whole generation grew up with a news agency telling them what to think. Instead of the generation that came before that, that got facts and they made up their own minds. Think about that. Two societies right there. People who can think for themselves and people who can't. That's what you created. Is that changing the world for the better, in your opinion? And for those of you that have become journalists because you want to change the fucking world? No. You failed. You failed at that. And that's, that's, a, a, that's, a, that's a sin, <laughs> I think. It really is. You take away the, the, one of the great rights humans have to think for themselves and you just turned it on its head by saying, no, we don't trust you to think for yourself. We're going to tell you what to think because we're smarter than you. We're better than you. Okay? Is that what you want to be as a journalist? You know, I mean, that's, that's kind of like fascism right there in itself. I mean, you know, all these wannabe dictators telling everybody how to think, how to eat, how to sleep. Okay? You know, now you're telling us what we're supposed to think. You know? So I, I just, I feel like, you know, when you see this kind of crap here where all these local news outfit outlets are basically saying verbatim the same goddamn thing, <laughs> you know someone paid them to do it. Jesus, I mean, someone's paying them to say all this stuff. And you know who it is, right? Because when they're talking about one person, then it's the other side that's doing it, right? I don't care if it's Democrat or Republican. You know, the fact they come out and say, oh, Joe Biden's mind is falling apart. Should that be an election decider? You know, even while the other guy is, is up to his fucking eyeballs and crimes, and that shouldn't be a that shouldn't be an election decider for them, right? <laughs> Christ, give me a break. All right. That's all for today. And I hope everybody has a great uh, weekend. And uh, subscribe, comment, and share. And keep your ears open for any health-related matters out there. Um, believe it or not, there's still some people out there that just keep getting COVID all the time. I don't know why that is, but they just keep doing it. But uh, treat each other nice, okay? Especially, you know, when, you, uh, when you're at home with the kids or your families and stuff. Um, maybe a little less time in front of the news would be good for them since we don't want them to not learn how to think for themselves. We want to be able to teach the kids how to think for themselves. So maybe the news these days just isn't the right example or the right guide for that because like I just got done telling you, uh, media is out there for itself, 
for their ratings and not for your betterment of your education or your intellect, okay? So I'll talk to you all later. Take care.